Villanova just gets out to a massive lead, making every three it felt like in the first half, led at half 44-16. to Held on despite, incredibly, a 21-0 run by Memphis in the second half to still win this game 79-63. Get it out, man. You and the hat, get it out. What do you, what do you want to say? Listen, all I want to say is that there's a big difference between Villanova and Memphis, and I think we know that now. We, we still don't know how good this Memphis team really is because, frankly, they've beaten some teams right now that we're not sure how good they are. Now, again, they were solid wins. You beat Missouri, Missouri, good win, right? You beat Michigan. Listen, it's better than losing to Michigan. You beat Arkansas last night, probably looked a little bit better than it looks today. Right. Like, I don't know if Missouri or Michigan are tournament teams at the end of the day. You know, I think Arkansas will be one. But again, who knows <laughs> I, what I do know? What I do know is that Villanova is in a different class. And, and I don't think Memphis is in that class right now that you can say they're a lock NCAA tournament team. I, I don't like listen. They couldn't guard the, the three at all. They couldn't. Villanova was was absolutely carving them up. They were moving the ball. Every shot looked uncontested. And then offensively, it honestly looked like an AU team out there for the first half. Now, again, I give them credit. They fought back. They made it respectable in the second half. But this still, to me, today looks like a team that has a long way to go to be a lock tournament team. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna abstain because I'm a host. I'm I'm gonna be a host. No, no. Okay. But you're and I'm gonna, but and you're I'm, a Memphian. You're a Memphian. I am a Memphian. I am a Memphian. I I don't have enough time in the segment. I don't have enough time in the segment to 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 debunk you right now. I'm gonna go to Jarrell and I want to ask Jarrell, is it really a, a negative, right? Is or how much of a negative is it to say right now? And thank you for taking that off. You don't deserve to wear that. Had, how much of a negative <laughs> is it really to say that Memphis isn't in the same class as Villanova? What I really am asking here is how good is Villanova? They look to me like one of the best teams in the country. No, absolutely. And uh, I mean, just going off of that, I think it was. Um, I think I heard Jeff the other night say something. It's not always. The fact that you lose uh, in college basketball a lot, it kind of matters how you lose, though. Uh, and I think that, uh, like you said, it's spot on, man. I think that uh, the story the story might be uh, Memphis kind of laying the egg uh, on mm -hmm. both sides of the ball in that first half and just digging a hole that they couldn't get out of. But on, on the flip side of that, man, uh, Nova did this to Maryland not too long ago, if I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, Memphis was – what four for 27 from the field in the first half uh and, and was down pretty much 30 the rest of the way except when they made the little run in the second half and they didn't get them credit because those guys did look uh a lot a lot more like the team that we thought that we were going to get in the matchup that we thought we were going to get in the second half but you know as we all know basketball is a game of two halves but man villanova looks really good and to be honest with you man they got the perfect balance they got the right guys out of the portal it looks like all of those guys have bought in the way Villanova plays traditionally ever since, uh, you know, the Jay Wright days. And uh, and then they got uh, they got Justin Moore and, and, and Dixon, man, and those guys are kind of leading the charge, man. But those guys are were playing together. They're playing old man-style defense. They're not gambling and getting out of position. They're mm -hmm. not over-exerting over themselves with the pressure. They're just locking in and making it really tough on teams, man. And um, Villanova looks like – they're going to not just be a, a team to be dealt with later on in March, but, uh, you know, once the Big East rolls around, too, they got to be in the top two or three teams, I think, in the conference. Yeah, and we do have an interview with Eric Dixon that we're going to get to here in just a minute. I, I, I do want to come back to you for a second, Jeff, though, because and, – and, and Memphis lost, right? So Memphis is not – and should not be the story. That's why we're going to get to Eric Dixon. But, like, Memphis is 5-1. and one. They, they picked up two neutral site victories against uh, a, a Big Ten team and a ranked SEC team. They beat Missouri at Missouri, which, again, like you don't – and I'm just like, – even even strip away the name, right? Strip away whoever it is. For for any team that, that is able to do that and be 5-1, and one, I mean, you're, you're basically saying that a team that is going to be ranked in the top 25 on Monday is not a lock for the NCAA tournament. Like, I just – like, I'm just – do you realize how – 
absurd you sound when you say that. Well, look at their schedule coming up too, John. Now, I think they'll pick off enough of these teams. I give Penny a lot of credit because I think he's played a really good non-conference schedule to whereas there's not so much pressure to have to win today's game. And to be honest, you know, if if you said to me, they, they go to and one and they beat Michigan, they beat Arkansas, they beat, you'd sign up for that. Penny Hardaway would sign up for where they are right now in a heartbeat. So I, I think there's a lot of good things to take, especially from a team that was put together so late in the summer. You know, we got to understand that too. Like this wasn't a group that was done even in April or May. This was a group that a lot of the guys were still kind of, right? When did David Jones and Javon Quinterly, you know better than, than me, John, when did they commit to play for Memphis? I don't Very know, late. It was and, late. And show up and show Very up late. late. Correct. Yep. So I, I do think yep. this is a team that's going to find their way. I like this team better than the last couple of years, to be honest, because they're old. Now you got a lot of three-time transfers on this group, which kind of scares me in a way when guys that have bounced around that much, they're not Villanova. They're not, they don't have that culture. Who does? Who does? Nobody. Right. Uh, I, think, I think again, it says more about a Villanova team that I picked to, to go to the final four. I still don't know if their point guard plays good enough, but they were absolutely, I mean, that first half, 44-18 at the break, I mean, they blew the doors off of Memphis. Memphis, for the first yeah, not half. Even, not even 18. It was only 16. <laughs> it was it only was 16. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't look like a CBI team in the first half. How's that? Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, I can't argue with that. And I do think it, it, it is the story of the day because this is a this is a coach that in Kyle Neptune, it was very much and, and probably rightfully so questioned about, you know, his ability to take over for Jay Wright after that. And not I think he has quieted so. a lot of those critics. Uh, not and, right and, and maybe not. And well, I mean, look, I, we have an interview we got to get to. I mean, we can have that discussion afterward if you want to. But I, I, it is a good interview. And I do think we should play it because, again, I mean, they are the story of the day winning this championship game.